Now in this video, I'm gonna give you a detailed look at some of the most popular broadcast spreaders available to us DIYers. Now when I say broadcast spreader, I mean one where the fertilizer falls through a gate or through drop holes, lands on an impeller that is spinning as you walk, and that impeller has these fins on it. And that pushes fertilizer evenly out across the front and the sides. This style of spreader delivers the most consistent application and is what you're gonna find on more expensive spreaders that professionals use as well. Now, if you take time and do the research, which starts with this video, you should only have to buy one spreader in your entire lifetime. I mean, just think about it. You fertilize your lawn, what, like five to six times per year, maybe pre-emergent once or twice a year, some biostimulants or insect control. So what is that, like 10 uses per year? So it's not like it's gonna get beat up and broken, but then again, when you do use it, you want it to work. Applying granular fertilizer to the lawn should not be a frustrating experience. So let me start off by saying this. This is not a place where you wanna cheap out if you can help it. And when I say cheap out, I'm not talking about the actual cost of the spreaders, because in my opinion, all of these are a little bit overpriced for what they are. And that brings me to the first spreader here that we're gonna look at, the Scott's EdgeGuard Mini. This is one of the spreaders in the lineup that I'm gonna recommend 100% against completely. It's $47 and it barely gets the job done. Now I have thick St. Augustine grass and to be honest with you, it's kind of difficult to push this little thing through it when it's got some weight to it. These are hollow cheap plastic wheels and you can kind of see they're inside the bucket width which makes this a little wonky balance wise and it kind of, it's easy to tip over. Not only that, it doesn't even spread fert very well at all. Now, if you have a super small lawn, a postage stamp, I call it, maybe 1,500 square feet in front, 1,500 in back, instead of spending almost $50 on this, just pick up a hand crank spreader. You're gonna get a much more consistent, even application out of it, and it's gonna be a lot easier and about half the price. I did a full video on hand spreaders. In fact, this one, which is available at a big box store, I'll give you a link in the description below if you wanna learn more about it. So remember, if you have a super small lawn or a larger lawn that's divided up into small sections, this is gonna be a much better choice than that Scott's EdgeGuard Mini. All right, now let's look at one of the most common spreaders that I see throughout the community, and that is the Scott's EdgeGuard DLX. Now at $89.99, once again, I think this is way overpriced. I mean, seriously, $90 for this plastic wheels, it just seems like a lot of money when you look at the build quality. Either way, this spreader can and will get the job done for you, but I still recommend it for smaller lawns or ones like mine that are easily broken down into small sections that are 2,000 square foot or smaller. If you have large expanses to your lawn that are like say 5,000 square foot or more, this is definitely not the spreader for you. So let me take a moment and mention that all Scott spreaders use the same settings. From that Edge Guard Mini to the Elite, the settings are consistent. If the bag tells you 5.25, then it would be 5.25 on all three of these. They have a convenient dial, and because Scott's is the leader in DIY, pretty much every brand of fertilizer you buy is gonna have the spreader settings for Scott's spreaders. So if you're somebody like me that likes to kind of mix up your ferts and use different things, it's a convenience to know that you're gonna have settings for your Scott's spreader on pretty much every bag you get. For example, here's Magical. And you can see right there, they got a Scott's rotary setting on that one. Here's an inset control. And you can see right there, Scott's edge guard settings. They also do tend to have earthway on almost all these bags as well. And so here's the thing with this spreader and all Scott spreaders, they're not really very consistent to begin with. And that is because the linkage is based on this spring. This linkage gets a lot of use and attention. Imagine if this spring gets stretched out or this cable kinks, there's even a lot of play in it, as you can see right here. Now, if this opening right here is not consistent, the fertilizer won't fall through fast enough or it could fall through too fast. This is called the drop rate and Scott spreaders are not very consistent here. Now I'm gonna show you later in this video on these two higher end spreaders right here, they're engineered differently so that they have a much more consistent drop rate. Now that doesn't mean the spreader won't work for you, it will. You just have to be sure to calibrate it properly at the beginning of each season to see if that spring is stretched out or maybe the cable's gotten kinked or something and then just compensate for that as you make applications going forward. Now I make all this sound like a big deal and if you're a beginner, I guess it can be, but the truth is once you have applied fertilizer with this spreader or any spreader a few times, you'll be able to tell if it's flowing right just by looking at it and by feel and you'll be able to adjust on the fly. Seriously, you develop like this sixth sense about these things once you make a few applications and truly learn your land. So 
all that being said, this spreader is just fine if you have a small lawn that is broken up into small areas of 2,000 square foot or less. I wanna stress that. It's not my first choice, but in a lot of cases, if you're at a big box store and you need to get one, this'll be your only choice. And this is what you'll end up with and you'll be just fine. Okay, now let's look at the Elite. I borrowed this one from a friend who I'm helping with his lawn. He picked it up on Amazon on sale last year for $69. And if you can find one of these for $69, then I say go for it, that's a good buy. However, the regular price for this spreader is $148. And again, in my opinion, that's overpriced when you look at the next two options here. This spreader is also overbuilt in my opinion. I mean, who needs two impellers? But this one does have a true trim guard on it or what Scott's calls an edge guard. Basically a trim guard or edge guard when activated, it shuts off half of the spread pattern. So you can get right up against the edge and not fling fur into the street or flower beds. Every spreader that we're reviewing today has a trim guard. Now I'm not gonna get into that much detail here on trim guards, except to say that there are only two spreaders in this lineup that have a true trim guard that actually cuts the drop rate properly at the same time. The others, they're just blockers. Okay, so back to the Elite. It's got four drop holes and two impellers. You'd think that gave it a great spread pattern, but it doesn't. It doesn't really throw too much better than that DLX right there. And when you get to the end of a run, if both sides didn't drain out the same, you now have an inconsistent application. Now it does have rubber tires. They're filled with foam, not air. So that does make it easier to push through thick grass. And it's a decent unit. Again, if you can get it on Amazon for that $69, go for it. I'll link it below if you wanna check out the price from whenever you're watching this video. Okay, now we're done looking at Scott spreaders. I know that was a lot, but they basically have the monopoly on the big box stores. But now we're gonna look at two spreaders that are a little bit more expensive, but are of a higher build quality and do a little bit, well, a lot better job. Uh, and they're still readily available. One is available at dealers and the other is available easily online. Okay, so the first is the Echo RB60, which you can get from your local Echo dealer. And the first thing I don't wanna point out here is there is no assembly. The biggest advantage that the Scott spreaders and also that this Echo have is you don't have to put them together. They come fully assembled. The only thing you need to make sure of is that you fill those tires with air. Somebody pointed out to me last year that I didn't have them filled. It worked fine, but once I actually filled them with air, it worked even better. So if you have a bumpy lawn or thick St. Augustine grass, having air filled tires or what they call pneumatic tires at the right PSI is a huge advantage for you and it will make spreading much more enjoyable. Now, Echo was smart when they contracted this build because the settings that they use here, those mirror Scott's settings. So in, if the setting on a Scott spreader is like 5.25 or 5.5, it's gonna be exactly the same here they mirror each other and they were very smart about that. So that's one of the nice things you get if you buy the Echo is you can just use Scott spreader settings on anything that you get and it'll work out just the same. And for the record, this spreader is much more accurate than those because of the way it's engineered. Let me show you why. So remember here on the Scott spreader, the opening is controlled by that spring and that cable, right? And I showed you that that can be off. So the Echo also has a spring and a lever, but it works on a static stop or positive stop. See the adjustments down here, and this is actually a separate disc controlling the opening that is independent of the disc that is here. All this one does, there's a disc that's sliding under there. When you open this, it's just opening up the gate 100%. Out of the way, in the way. Out of the way, in the way. A separate disc is what's controlling how much furt can fall through. And this separate disc doesn't move once you go. So I set it there on whatever that is, eight and a half. And you can see that's the opening. And that's not gonna change because I'm not touching that down there. That just stays where it is. That's a positive stop or a static setting. This one, it's, it's simple in design because everything relies on this. So the gate, the opening, the drop hole, everything relies on that one gate. That's it. There's no positive stops or anything. So can you see how with this one, every time you get to the end of a run and reactuate, the setting has to kind of reset itself or refine itself. Where with this one, the setting is static. It doesn't move. So every time you get to a run, all you're doing is just closing the gate and then reopening the gate. But the setting itself stayed static. It never moved. 
that means less of a chance for error. And that's why this spreader is more accurate because the setting is independent of the gate opening. A couple of years ago, this spreader suggested retail price was $99.99. Today, it's up to $149.99. Now I'll leave it to you to make a decision on why that is, but a 50% increase in 24 months is pretty steep, and it could account for why the Scott spreaders are also super expensive. Either way, the RB60 is a solid choice for any DIYer and is what I consider to be one of the best options available to us. It's not perfect, but even at $149, you're still gonna get your money's worth because this spreader will last you an entire lifetime of applications as a DIYer. It's also easy to get at any Echo dealer. Okay, now lastly, let's look at the Earthway 2600. This has been for a long time my favorite spreader. It has a true trim guard called side spread control, which it's a little bit of a pain to get to. They redesigned this recently, probably to keep their patent intact. I'm not, I'm not a fan, but either way, this is a true trim guard that actually cuts the rate. Let me show you. So let's see, we'll turn the trim guard off. You can see all of the holes open, right? See that? Now we'll put the trim guard on. And now you can see two of the holes are cut off and only one is open. And what that effectively does is it lets for it only come out of that side and not that side. That's a true trim guard, or, or they call it side spread control. It also has air-filled tires and a round hopper, which I prefer because I can get a better line of sight on where my fert is going but most of all, it drops consistently and spreads really nicely. Now there are no springs though. You basically just open and close it with that latch right there. So you open, you push, and then when you get to the end of a run, you close it. Easy peasy. Okay, the only drawbacks are, number one, if you're taller than 5'11", you're gonna need to bend down to use this spreader. However, if you're short, 5'8", like me, it's perfect for you. The second drawback is you do have to put it together, which for me was a two beer experience or about an hour. Now I enjoyed that and it helped me to learn the spreader inside and out, which directly translates to better applications. As you assemble the unit, you start to understand how it works even before you get out into the lawn. And I like that. But then again, that is why you're never going to see this in a big box store. They definitely don't want to deal with the hassle or customer service involved with something that has takes an hour to put together. Now the price here is $191, which is quite high, but then again, as you've seen, all the prices are higher than expected in today's world. Here's the thing, this spreader, I am 100% sure is made in the USA in Bristol, Indiana, and I'm willing to pay a little bit more to get made in the USA, which I did. And I wanted to say right now, every spreader in this video has been purchased by me. None of this is sponsored. One thing that is funny is almost all these manufacturers will sell a lot cheaper on Amazon at different times of the year than they even do on their own websites. I have no idea why they do that, but they do. So I'll give you links in the description below to each one of these on Amazon. And depending when you're watching this, you might catch one of these on sale and get a much better deal. So at this point, you might be wondering which one of these do I recommend? Well, again, for super small lawns, even a lawn like mine that's bigger, 8,000 square feet, but divided into small sections, I I just use a hand crank because it's super easy, but you are gonna have times when you do need a walk behind or a push spreader. And if that's the case, my number one, if you're willing to spend the money, is the Earthway. This delivers the most consistent, most beautiful spread pattern. Again, I've, I've told you all the reasons why I like it. Made in the USA, so right there, $191. You cannot go wrong. This will last you the rest of your life. Uh, but again, the RB60, also an excellent option, and you will not be disappointed. So. Those are the two I recommend. I'm not a big fan of the Scott spreaders, even though I don't wanna, I don't wanna crap on them. They, they work fine, they get the job done. They're just, to me, you're gonna make this purchase one time, you might as well get something good. And that's where I say, get that Earthway or get that Echo. I'll give you full links to all these in the description below. So once again, I hope this video has been helpful to you. Go look in the comments below because a lot of folks in the community will tell you their opinions on these spreaders as well. And you'll learn a lot there as well as if you have any questions, please leave those and I'll do my best to answer them. With that, I'm Alan Hayne, The Lawn Care Nut. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great season and I'll see you in the lawn.